Okay, so what are we uh, I'm going to talk to you about? We, um, we're a futurist. We spend our time looking about five to 15 years out, trying to help clients in government, in business, in the association world, think about how the world is changing, what are the different scenarios. Um, I guess the biggest single question at the moment in Europe is, you know, what happens when Germany walks away? Uh, and everyone trying to work out when the only banker walks away, what happens to the rest of Europe? So it's those kind of questions, and how do we respond to a changing world? How do we grow value? How do we grow our economy in that world? We're, in particular, the stuff I want to talk to you about today are two projects we're working on with a number of global sponsors. Uh, one is called Convention 2020, where the leading, uh, or sort of the, the most forward-looking association in the sector called ICA, and the most forward-looking industry event, which is IMEX, both came to us and said, listen, if you look at our major clients in the medical world, in technology, in construction, all of them are doing forward-looking studies. They're looking 10, 20 years ahead at their industry. They're trying to understand how the world is changing and how their businesses, their propositions need to change. Our industry doesn't really do that. There are very, very small pockets, and Sydney's always cited as one, where they're actually thinking long-term about what happens next. So we need to do that for the industry. So part of what I'm going to share with you is, is research that we then started on what is driving change for our clients, what are the implications for the meetings industry, and how do we respond in innovative ways. The second piece is, it was born out of that, where London, Seoul, and Sydney all said to us, listen, we need to go further than this. We need to really get under the surface of what it means to be uh, an effective destination long term. How do we make sure that as a destination, we really are thinking 10 years ahead and changing the way we operate, and making sure that we have the capability to attract those big corporations and those big associations who might be planning six or seven years ahead. How do we convince them that we, we will be able to respond to their needs? And so that's the bulk of what I'm going to share with you, is the research we're doing through that group uh, of seven uh, cities around the world trying to understand how do you shape the future. So the first thing that uh, I want to share is, we, as part of the research on Convention 2020, we've been looking at what are the priorities for destinations around the world, looking at both what the destinations themselves say but also what their customers say. And there's, there's no surprise that the biggest single issue now is everywhere we look, there are increasingly competitive destinations. Five years ago, people weren't talking about Seoul. Two years ago, people weren't talking about Durban. You know, a year ago, no one was talking about Hyderabad. But literally every year, there's a new destination that suddenly emerges on the radar screen. And there's that, oh my God, moment where you think, well, where did they come from? And it's getting harder and harder to differentiate ourselves in that marketplace. The second issue is recognizing now that an event is not a physical experience anymore. It isn't just the, the fact that people arrive at your doorstep, experience a bunch of content, whether it's a trade show or a conference or a convention, and then leave. These things start a long time before with the social media and the conversations that happen in the social media. A lot of the event is actually designed there. They carry on using the social media during the event, but they also have a very long footprint after the event. So how do we use the social media more effectively to support events? And as a destination, how do we support that? How do we promote ourselves using the social media and make people aware of how we can differentiate ourselves? And the third is getting far better at actually working out how we spend our money, deciding which events to go after and who to focus on. And I'm, you know, I'm going to use Sydney as an example here because they're always held up by everyone else. And Sydney's done a fantastic job of saying, what are the key industry sectors that we're trying to develop nationally, and then going out and profiling the key events in those sectors, identifying over a 1,000 and winning more than 100 of those bids already, which I think is one of the key reasons why you've moved up five places in the, in the global rankings in the last year, because of that very effective targeting. Compare that with other cities around the world who bid for everything, whether or not they stand a chance of winning it, simply because the bids come through the doorstep. And it's getting smarter about how we use our time, how we use our money, and how we use the resources we align around us. Then if you look longer term, we've been asking about uh, what will it take and what are the priorities for destinations looking five years out. The first and most important one is a recognition that our customers are in competition. It doesn't matter if you're the International Haemophilia Association. There are other people who can provide the same content to your delegates. So you have to, as an association now in particular, prove that for a sponsor, for an exhibitor, or a delegate, coming to your event will deliver the biggest total possible return on investment, whether that's learning, whether that's research you know, opportunities you get into, whether that's the opportunity to do business. You've got to prove the return on investment. So a lot of the research that you'll hear about from UTS 
is out of as much value to the associations as it is to the destination. The second is, is this big issue, which I'm going to spend most of my time talking about, which is how do we prove the long-term legacy? How do we prove the benefits beyond the direct visitor spend? Which is fantastic. You know, spending in hotels, spending in local restaurants, spending in local shops, travel spending, which is all very, very important. But there is another level uh, that we, we can look for, and that's what I'll talk about more, and you'll hear a lot more about from everyone else, the benefits beyond tourism. And then the third piece is about getting much smarter in how we use the data, how we do research to actually identify where we should be playing. So not just focusing on what are the opportunities out there now, but what are the next set of opportunities? What are the next billion or 100 billion or 200 billion or trillion dollar industries? How do we find where those opportunities are so we can attract them early? So th these are sort of common priorities that are beginning to emerge across the industry. And the challenge is, how do we make sure we're ahead of the game as a destination like Sydney? And so the opportunity is recognizing that this is truly a global industry, huge opportunities. Uh, there are, there are, there's real value in attracting certain types of events. We know like the G20, it drives capability across the city. But we also know that we're in a situation where I don't need to tell you that growth is no longer guaranteed. You guys you know, posted a negative quarter last, you know, in, in the last quarter. We look around the world now, the most common view is that we could have two or three more global downturns in the next five years. $700 trillion of derivatives out there, these complex products that can cause all sorts of issues. Europe on the brink of a debt crisis. We know there are shocks to come. But that's incredibly liberating, because if you know that's going to happen, you don't have to worry about it. You have to start thinking about it. You have to start to say, OK, how do we respond in a really turbulent world? And it forces us to say, actually, in a really competitive world where there are going to be more shocks, how do we start behaving differently? How do we do the research? How do we develop the insights? How do we prove that we are the best place to do business if you're trying to run an international convention? Which means focusing beyond the tourism benefits. Everyone gets that. Everyone around the world now measures that. But how do we prove to our government that it's better to put money into, let's say, the conventions industry than into all the other industries that might come along and ask for the same money? How do we demonstrate that we have a bigger multiplier effect? And one of the things that helps us is if you look at what are the leading events globally that, that move around, that bring in large numbers of delegates and large numbers of economic opportunities, they're all in the knowledge-based sectors. So what we did was bring together these seven cities who were all interested in saying, how do we maximize the opportunities? That's Seoul, Sydney, London, Toronto, Abu Dhabi, San Francisco, and Durban. And we've deliberately got cities all over the world, but also at different stages in their development. And uh, some, you know, heavy, mature democracies, in the case of Abu Dhabi, as they say, they're blessed by not having politicians. But you know, they, they've all got different views on the game, and it's fascinating to see how things work. Uh, and we focus on three things, and it's very important now. Uh, there's a lot of associations and alliances in the sector now uh, which are just focused on marketing themselves. You know, seven destinations get together and go out and present themselves to the world as a marketing thing. We've said that's not what we're doing. What we want to do is to identify what it's going to take to be successful in the future. That might drive the marketing of each city, but we're not marketing collectively. Uh, the first is about point research and knowledge sharing. So there's a lot of different topics where different cities have a lead on something. So just sharing that can save a huge amount of time. The second is a piece of research we've kicked off, uh, which we're saying is, is genuine competitive advantage, so we're not going to share that with anyone either. And the third is a piece where we're looking at thought leadership that will actually benefit everyone in the industry globally, but will obviously position our members differently. And so we're emulating what Sydney have done with the Beyond Tourism study, and all six of the other members of, are embarking on a study to see if we can measure those long-term benefits. And, and, and if you look at the whole research agenda of a forward-looking destination now, we're very clear on the kind of things we want to understand and the kind of things that really maximise the economic value. And clearly, it's about how do we use the convention sector to drive growth, to drive job creation in our particular destination? How do you do that? Well, the first and most obvious one is that at a convention, business happens. Uh, whether it's the exhibitors and sponsors, whether it's the delegates doing business with each other, but most important for us as a destination, can we connect the local business community to the events coming in? So if you look at Eindhoven, much smaller than you guys, five key sectors on the industrial plan, they will only go after events in those five sectors on the basis that they can showcase what they have locally, 
and bringing the industries and the customers and the investors from those sectors to generate business for those local industries. So they can really drive revenue in particular for those local businesses, very key to them, because they've also been forward-looking enough to recognise that, you know, given Europe's part of the state, there will be no state money to help the city out. Uh, the second is how do we drive knowledge sharing? And we hear this time and time again, that if you bring a key event to your city in any sector, let's say biotech, you can potentially get four or 500 of your researchers and local players into that event. So you can get a huge amount of knowledge transfer and it helps you ensure that your research, your innovation capability is being informed by the very best. Whereas if the event happens in Singapore or in London, you might get 10 or 20 going. So it's about the, the, the accelerator effect for those involved in research and innovation. The next is there's a huge amount of innovation and performance improvement that comes out from the idea sharing and events. So one of the things we're trying to capture is how much of that really happens. What, what really happens to those who participate? You know, how can we measure that value? How can we prove it? We also know that we have, in pretty much every city in, the, in our uh, consortium, leading edge sectors, people who are really pushing the boundaries in, in their particular sector. So how do we make sure we're bringing in events that really showcase those capabilities but also integrating those players into the, the event, integrating the study tours, integrating the opportunity to introduce the people in our sector who are at the leading edge to the industry researchers, the, the, the industry players themselves, the new ventures, the investors, all of whom come in that ecosystem that comes when you have a convention. There's also a really, a really important point here, which is that many of us are making quite significant investments in infrastructure. And we're also trying to focus where we do new investment and trying to uh, encourage the local community to make more of an investment. Bringing in the right events and having a clear plan about how you're going to leverage it can actually accelerate that and also encourages people from outside to invest more directly. In a particular area, uh, take London. One of the key focuses for London at the moment is we're building a big new technology cluster in London. So we're very clearly focused now on bringing in the events where they'll bring the investment community and the, the research and development funding community from major corporations so we can show them what's being built in London and encourage them to invest in that so we can accelerate the growth of those key sectors and we can accelerate those clusters and that in turn will benefit the research community uh, because it will drive research back to them. That will create more patents, which will create more business opportunities, which will grow more jobs. So there's a, there's a, there's a very neat cycle that everyone's focused on.